Leandro Trossard has picked up an injury. Gilberto Silva, our former Arsenal player, has thrown his hat into the ring. You know, I've been the latest person linked with the sporting director's job. We're still linked with Luis Campos, currently at PSG, formerly of Liel and Monaco. And there's a couple of other bits and pieces. As usual, big up yourselves. And, you know, this was the first international break, I'd say, us Arsenal fans actually wanted, with obviously us not picking up results. Obviously, we've had a lot of injuries since the season started, and we've currently got some now. You know, Declan Rice, Bakayo, Benjamin White, Calafuri technically were playing a close, a tight game with Timber. Odegaard has just returned to fitness and there's been a lot of stuff and Trossart's now picked up a knock and whether you think Trossart's a starter or a, or a squad player, we need everybody fit, we need everybody available for what's left of the season. We can talk about January, it's not here or there at this moment in time. If I share my screen with you lot, let's see exactly what's being spoken about people. Now, Arsenal hit with fresh injury headache as Leandro Trossart limps off during Belgium Nations League defeat. Trossard was withdrawn after just 37 minutes. Arsenal already have concerns of Bakayo Saka and Declan Rice, who both pulled out of the England's Nations League squad. The Gunners will return to Premier League action against Nottingham Forest on Saturday, in which Nottingham Forest are in form. I believe their striker, Chris Wood, got player of the month. Nuno Espirito Santo got manager of the month. They're flying on paper. That should be the game that restarts Arsenal's um, season and gets us back on a winning run and addressing this blip. On, on paper, we... We probably are still the favourites, but we're probably not if you look at form and whatnot. Now, Trossard's been down on his luck, you know. He obviously played that back pass that got Saliba sent off. He him himself got sent off against City, Mr. Penalty in the Champions League, you know, has, has not really performed well, Trossard, and not really taking advantage of injuries that's seen him play regular football. I think the game before he's picked up this knock for Belgium, he actually was getting a he was getting hammered by the the what would you call it? Belgian press, apologies, Um, in relation to his performances. Sometimes international football can be a welcome distraction, but when you're down on your luck in this life, you're down on your luck. And I hope regardless of what's seen this season, if Mikel Arteta is to stay here long term and those above him see we played a dangerous game and got fortunate with injuries last season and you're seeing it now, even I... I Forgive me, Zin Zinchenko's picked up knocks. Tommy Asu is a regular occurrence. Tierney's not really part of the first team per se like that or in Mikel Arteta's plans, but gets knocked. So I don't think anyone wants to hear this, but Arsenal have been handed a fresh injury concern as Trossard was forced off during Belgium's loss against Israel or in the Nations League. Mikel Arteta obviously is already dealing with the headache of two key players in Declan Rice, who has a broken toe, and Bakayo Saka, who has another injury. So this is quite scary. Obviously, people, the last international break we lost on the Garden Califuri. October, we saw injuries again to Bakayo Saka and Martinelli. Way it's not really been good. I don't want to feel sorry for us. I don't feel sorry for anybody connected with Arsenal Football Club. I've got a lot of excuses. I might cut the club and Mikel Arteta. And yes, this is a harsh hand with injuries, but the squad was not big enough when we closed the window in summer. Last season was a bit of an anomaly in that typically we see what injuries do. And we can't act like injuries are... Just simply put, just something that happens to Arsenal. Now, of course, if you have, in an, well, in an ideal world, everyone's fit. But for this example, if you live in a reality where, you know, you've got several key players with several injuries, kind of what you saw Liverpool fall off maybe uh, a few years ago where they, they had a, a, a bunch of injuries, then I might cut sympathy. But we've known this for a while, man. We really have known this for a while. Uh, the Belgian manager said, people... The players we brought out had never played or trained together. There were a lot of injuries before the game and we also lost Trossard and Zeno during the game. It wasn't a good game, but the conditions were very difficult. Boy, boy, what can I say? And as we know, Benjamin White went through injury, I mean, went through surgery to address an injury. Califuri and Tommy Asu apparently are expected to be back after the international break. And while I don't want to endorse or condemn the ITKs of this world, allegedly uh, Arsenal delayed Benjamin White's surgery just simply put, when Tommy Asu and Calafuri stay fit now, boy, we ain't, boy, like, we're, we're really being, you know, pushed to our limit where our defensive options are concerned, even with Timber and Calafuri with this condensed fixture calendar list over the festive period, that's going to be a big arc. We don't, re we're not really blessed with attackers, I know on paper, but the ones that are actually trusted, so... Does this give an opportunity? And don't forget to hit the like button and let me know your thoughts. Does this give an opportunity to someone like Raheem Sterling in this in this case? Or even Gabriel Jesus, who have been on the peripheral things? Uh, boy, I don't know, man. But it just seems like whenever some players come back, we pick up some other knock. So, yeah, get well soon, Trossard. You don't want to hear that. Um, I did cover this in a previous video. Go and check that out. But Luis Campos of PSG has been linked with replacing Edu as sporting director. We all know people, he's 
60 years of age, wealth of experience, best known for what he did at Monaco and Lille, currently working at PSG, probably worked at a number of clubs, more clubs than I can count. Uh, apparently he has a reputation for finding young talent and he has not renewed his contract with PSG. So is that a case of he's looking to renew or probably will renew his contract at PSG at the time now? Edu's leaving. We need a sporting director. I have no doubt that Arsenal might sit there and say, you know what, good reputation with, with young players. There's a lot of transferables, wealth of experience. We tried the young manager, young sporting director. Let's get an experienced head, a real footballing man like Arteta because Arteta right now is the only one on the board. You know, his contract is running out. Do we put him on the shortlist? Or is it exaggerated for that very reason owing to his contract i'm not sure but where you've been linked with wolves with lewis campos you know even the west ham lad there's some good names but being linked and actually getting them is another thing we've also been linked with olabe of sociedad who apparently has said he is leaving sociedad so yeah people i mean i'm all foresight um bringing campos to the carpet as i said i do think you need an experienced head to kind of guide Mikel arteta if i'm honest with you I'm not saying he's right or wrong <coughs> You see PSG now with the Vatayas, the Jao Neves, the Bacolas. You know, Bacola is doing very well this season. Why not? And we all know about his work at Monaco. You know, he can have a hand to say in the Bernardo Silvers, Fabinho's, uh, Martial, um, Mbappe, Osimhen, etc., etc. people. And you look at Leo where they had Rafa Leal, Gabriel, Nicolas Pepe, a bunch of players who were sold on and gone off to do other things, people. Um, and we all know apparently Arsenal held future planning talks in LA this week. Obviously, it's the international break. But yeah, Mikel Arteta is linked up with the owners, the Cronkies, as well as Tim Lewis, Richard Garlic, and assistant sporting director Jason Atto in LA, people. Probably in, relying, in relation to probably a little general chit chat about our form and what we're trying to achieve this season. Obviously, the January and the summer markets, and probably what I hope, where the Sackers, the, Mag the Gabriel Magaleses, the Martinellis, the Salibas, in the summer, they've got two years left on their deal. I think I speak for every Arsenal fan where that needs to get sorted out, people. So that's that. Uh, content condensing all the injury stuff and looking at the landscape, as we know, apparently Benjamin White won't play until 2025, so his football's done. We hope Bakayo Saka recovers in time to play against Nottingham Forest, but at this moment we're in the dark and Mikel Arteta doesn't really shed much light in his press conferences, but maybe we know something there. Declan Rice, who did regardless want to play for England as well as the game against Chelsea for Arsenal, has got a broken toe. So it's unknown when he is when he's going to be back. Saka and Declan Rice is such a blow. And Chossa, at this moment in time, we don't know. I'd imagine he's having scans and the physio people are doing what they need to do. Tommy Asu's having another injury hit campaign, came back against Southampton, came back again. Some rumours say he's going to be back after the international break. This is said it's unknown. Calafuri, again, the same, but currently it's unknown. And the same said with Tierney. So injuries galore. Gilberto Silva has been speaking and potentially threw his hat into the ring for the sporting director role. He said, Edu is a very cool guy. I think it was a tough decision for him to leave the club and I wish him the best. He has done a great job for the club and of course, I think the club will miss him. He made a great partnership with Mikel in order to have a good balance for Arsenal. Honestly, it was a big surprise for me, but something, but sorry, but sometimes it happens and I hope that he's happy with the next challenge and whatever he decides to do. I still do some work with the club as an ambassador. This is not something I was thinking about doing in the next few years despite the fact that i've done it for panathinaikos in the past in the last few years i've been offered on a different road in football and with arsenal i don't know i don't know i've done the preparation for a few years ago i've been approached by a few clubs in brazil but i decided not to take the position i'm not saying right now but it's always great to be around arsenal even as an ambassador now Gilberto, if you've done the job at, at panathinaikos fair enough some would say being a former player he knows the club and i'm not being harsh because i have no leg to stand on in this kind of debate but we're linked with Olabe, Simon Rules, Lewis Campos, guys that are known for that kind of role that we and probably better than they do and more experienced than they do to go from them names there to Gilberto Silva now everybody deserves a chance in life and in an, you know if we got Gilberto Silva and he was the best thing since life spread great but I don't think that's something I'm keen on not that I make any decisions I am not buying us being linked with Vlahovic once again people if I'm brutally honest with you especially because of his comments about defensive work during this international period but nonetheless we're still being linked with him Arsenal are monitoring the situation of Vlahovic the Serbian has been in fine form this season scoring nine times and assisting one in 16 matches but his serial 
Real side are struggling to make progress with a new contract for the prolific number nine. So are Arsenal being linked with him mainly because we need a striker, but also piggy banking off our former interest and his contract? I'm not too sure. But according to Romano, Vlahovic and his reps are now exploring their options. Arsenal are understood to be keeping a an eye on developments. It's added that Arteta remains keen to strengthen in their attacking department. We know we've been linked with Jokerez and Izak before. Uh, Juventus apparently are looking at signing Kivio people as well, completely off topic. That's what we've seen. We all know Gabriel Jesus is still here. We all know we sold Eddie and Ketia people. In April, apparently, Vlahovic said, not that this means anything, I heard I saw the reports, but I didn't know anything. I was thinking mainly about myself and preparing for a good season. Future, two years have passed and I'm very happy here. This is my answer. I want to win something important with Juve. Then we'll see. We'll talk about it later. So we'll have to see exactly what's going on. Once again, people, Romano said this is not the first time Arsenal will be linked with a striker. It won't be the last. Vlahovic joins a list of reported striking targets that include Victor Jokerez, Victor Osimhen, and Benjamin Sesko, to name a few. Apparently, Arsenal are still in the running to sign Zubamendi, but we face competition from Manchester City. I think everybody's bored of talking about Zubamendi. Uh, Juventus are targeting a number of Premier League players after Paul Pogba's departure. And Paul Pogba has been linked with several clubs, including ours. Once again, would you like having people? Would you stay clear? As I said, you know, Juventus are being linked with several players in the Premier League. They've been linked with Joshua Zertsky of Man United. He's just walked in the door at Carrington. Uh, they've been linked with Jaguzin of Spurs and also Kivio of Arsenal people. I'm not letting Kivio go in January unless the offer makes too much sense and maybe we can act. But I just feel whether you rate Kivio or not, we haven't got the biggest squads. We're seeing so many injuries. I don't think it makes sense. You know, I know Kivio is a squad player, but that's exactly why you need a squad, people. But that's just me. If Kivio wants to leave, he wants to leave. Arsenal and Chelsea scouts have been closely monitoring South Paolo wonder kid William Gomez ahead of a transfer. I mean, nobody could stop Chelsea with side of these talents, but the 18 year old can play as a winger or attacking midfielder and has recently impressed in recent times with Sao Paulo, anticipating that he's someone that could be snapped up by a top European club in the future. The problem is, in today's day and age, you're talking probably like 50 odd million for these kind of guys. Arsenal with Chelsea are showing the strongest interest for the moment, with scouts from both clubs keeping an eye on Gomez and giving positive feedback on what they've seen so far. He's already showing some signs of being ready to make the step up playing at a more competitive level and he looks to be a good fit for the style at either the Emirates Stadium or Stamford Bridge people so we'll have to see what's going on there but Brazilian wonder kid will all be for that apparently Chelsea have made a bid for Embuermo says this report Embuermo is also someone that Arsenal have been linked with uh, Mikel Moreno spoke about why he actually signed for Arsenal he said I was seduced by the fact that it was a team in the process of growth they had not won yet they wanted to win feeling a participate participant in building a winning culture as happened to me at Real and also they insist they could help me grow more It'd be a place where they would try to help you polish your defects and become the total player who can achieve more things on an individual level so big up yourself Mikel Moreno think you've been written off think you've been overhyped before you kicked the ball and then written off simultaneously by fans but I don't think you've been a bad player I think you're a, a, a floor raiser not necessarily a ceiling raiser Manchester United allegedly have submitted a bid for Osman despite the fact that he said he'd at least complete the campaign in Turkey with Galatasaray that's right. Chelsea apparently are also leading the race to sign Jokerez from Sporting next year, people. Apparently, he wants to stay at Sporting Lisbon until the end of the season. Newcastle could look to sell Isaac and use the money for a world-class replacement in which hopefully we can get our pennies together and make a move for Isaac. I will, I love KK and I'm sure you lot agree as well with Napoli. I definitely can't pronounce his name. Apparently, Barcelona won him. He's valued at £67 million, So, £67 million. Could we throw our hat in the ring? Nico Williams is the priority target for Barcelona next summer. So, that saga is going to recommence commence next summer. Uh, Sane is not keen on a move to Man United. He'd prefer a move to London and Arsenal if he does leave Germany again. Someone whose contract is running out at the end of the season. Liverpool are ready to compete with Juventus for the signing of Joel Hato. The defender is valued at £25 million, which Juventus are willing to pay. Surely he's worth more than that. And... Arsenal, let's get back in the ring for him, if I'm honest with you. Uh, Victor Osman will be available for £62.7 million in the summer, as per the Napoli release clause. Uh, and Ryan Cherky, you know, Leon have uh, provisionally been relegated from um, Liga, and there's stuff going on around that. 
I like Cherokee a lot. Seems like Liverpool are the ones looking to sign him, but could we throw our hat in the ring? I think that's attainable in January, purely because he almost left in the summer for 15 million. Liverpool have set their sights on Cherokee as a possible replacement for Mo Salah, with Leon seeking to raise funds to address their dire financial situation. Come to the carpet, man. Arteta can help you, man. But on that note, don't forget to smash the like button. Let me know your thoughts on everything we've discussed. Don't forget to uh, subscribe if you haven't. Again, keep an eye out for videos because there's always videos coming out and watch alongs and the rest of it. Most importantly, stay safe, stay blessed. One love. <laughs>